Attention all state police units. Today, January 31, 1973, David Jordan Williams escaped custody and is believed to be hiding in the Chicago area. He was serving time for attempted murder and aggravated battery. He is considered armed and dangerous. I've been kind of expecting you. How in the name of God could it happen? The prison doctors found blood in his urine. Couldn't explain it. He got a court order. The warden at Joliet had to transfer him to the Illinois Research Hospital here in Chicago for tests. IRH doesn't have any security areas. He gets up, puts on his bathrobe and slippers, tells his guard he's going to take a shower and vanish home. I don't believe it. Then you're not going to believe this either. The blood that kept showing up in his specimens, it was his own. He just pricked his finger and put it in the test tube. I want that animal back in prison where he belongs. Easy, Swalwell. The Department of Corrections will handle it. I'll handle it. He damn near killed my buddy. This is a formal request, Cap. I want to be assigned. This guy Williams is the worst there is. A killer, pure and simple. He doesn't need a reason. Never feels remorse. It's just all a game to him. Destroying lives, hurting people, good people, like my buddy. Williams is smart, he's smooth, convincing, has a way with women, like that attorney of his, Shannon Foley. I'm gonna personally put her under surveillance right away. He'll be contacting her, I guarantee it. This monster's gotta be stopped, Captain. Dear Counselor, something about escaping is very tiring, I fear, but I am safe. What's uppermost in my mind, what's constantly in my thoughts, is your love, Shannon, and my love for you, and the fact that I cannot be totally whole without you. I will not forget you, Shannon, though I may have to travel far away. I will continue to be mindful of the extreme pressure you're now under from the boys in the white hats as they start knocking on your door, sitting on your doorstep, and having your body watched. Lock up your body, love, for it belongs to me. Given half a chance, I'll send for you. Love you. Love you. Ciao. My kids win. Million? Yeah. Two million. I'm serious. Okay, you're on, sucker. You got Come on! Some in prayer. Find him. Well, your lab tests are all negative. But 
this is always going to rub on this when you wear high heels. So, NHH, no high heels, even when you're wearing those great tight pants we all know and love. Is that clear? Yes, that's clear. What is it, Hope? Well, Doc, I've been having these feelings. Fright and weakness. <laughs> Forget it, I'm just being silly. Oh, no. What frightens you, Hope? I know what you're thinking, that this is psychological. But you're wrong, because I'm really happy. I'm happier than I've been in a long, long time. Richard's really beautiful. He loves my kids, and we're gonna get married. Maybe that's it. it. Seems like every time I get really happy, something happens. Something bad happens. had to go before the grand jury. They're seriously thinking of indicting me. That's ridiculous. Well, ridiculous or not, I think it's a real possibility. I could be disbarred. I think it's just another way of theirs to try to get at me through you. They're good at that. Don't fall for it. If they indict you, I'll come in. Oh? I'm sorry we can't be together today. I'm a little out of the area. I'm also a little out of change. It's now three minutes. Signal went through. Thank you, dear. Anything else? I guess not. Okay. Bye, love. What do you think I should do about Debbie? Debbie? Well, I think you should probably see her. Any other old girlfriend you happen to have lying around. See how you feel. She keeps calling me. She called me at the office nine times yesterday. Oh, great. Great. Four times she called just to say she wasn't going to call again. Now, will you come here? Richie, you're everything to me. This is the only time in my life when I feel like it's right, and good, and it's gonna work. Please don't let anybody or anything come between us. Never.
Hi. Would you like to have a nightcap? <clears throat> Door. Oh. Mr. Bradley oh. Tyler, uh, Benton Harbor, Michigan. Mr. Uh, T-Y-L-E-R Tyler, it seems, is in the... Well, well, well. Wholesale jewelry business. Uh, uh, oh, Bradley Tyler from Benton Harbor, Michigan. Where's all your jewelry, Bradley? Mr. Tyler! I just asked you a very serious question. How am I going to tell you? Where are your samples? I'm not going to tell you anything. Oh, oh don't hit him. Don't, don't kill him. Please don't kill him. You said we were just going to have some fun. I Shut up! Please! What is it? Police. They were already here. They're here again. You guys are listening to everyone I talk to. What more do you want? My name's... My name's Swalwell. Swalwell. Swell. What do you want? I'd like to talk to you about Jordan Williams. Who? D. Jordan Williams. He walked out of a hospital in the middle of winter wearing a bathrobe and slippers. Gee. I think he must have had some help doing that. You know what I'm talking about, Miss Foley? Do you have any other identification I can look at other than that? Time it snows like that back east, another 50,000 people move to LA. Keeps this guy that nice shade of brown, huh? These belong to you, Mr. Tyler. Thank you, Miss Harris. Happy driving. Thank you. Take care. Bye bye. Bye. The most significant aspect about William's personality is the ease with which he manipulates women. I mean, <laughs> all women. Waitresses, airline stewardesses, secretaries, clerks, nurses. Lady lawyers. Yes, lady lawyers. Once he sees them, he owns them. I mean, in his own mind, of course. He's got no societal values, no conscience of any kind. No matter what kind of havoc or injury he's caused the previous day, every new day is a new adventure for him. Likes to play cat and mouse. It's a classic sociopath. Any of this help? Keep going, Doc. He never really lets any of his women go. And they're very reluctant to let him go. Takes him a long time to get disillusioned. Works on a woman's sense of morality. Extracts promises from her. What about that lawyer? Still hears from him. He writes her, phones her. Doesn't show up. She waits. <laughs> you sound sore that she hasn't gotten disillusioned yet. Look, I I'm just trying to figure out if, if there's a chance he might meet someone who, who won't be disillusioned. That's a scary thought. Doc. I'm a man with terrible, terrible, scary thoughts where this guy's concerned. Could it happen? Yeah. But, uh, whoever she is, 
I feel sorry for her. Dreams. You will never know how much I missed you today. Mm. I am never going on another commercial interview again in my life. <laughs> and a refill for Mr. Morgan. Excuse me. Is that Chuck Morgan, the engineer? No, Richard Morgan, advertising. Oh. And I'm really a flake. <laughs> <laughs> no. Fruitcake? Well, uh, no. Richie. I walked into this room, and there are 30 of the most gorgeous girls you've ever seen in your life. I mean, who needs this? What the hell am I trying to be a model for, anyway? I don't even know what I'm doing. Oh, I'm dingling. Oh, be. Richie. I mean, you know me. I, I, I go to ball games and I root for the visitors, right? Mm -hmm. I, I don't care which dog eats which dog. I never cry at weddings or funerals, and I sing off key. Yeah, but you sing. You sing. You are the best. You are sweet and cuddly and just the best. Good to see you, Hope. Good to see you, Van. And you, sir. Hope you're going to let me use your telephone? Of course, Ben. You're looking very well. I try to. Someday, you and Van are going to have to have a little chat about civility in all that. Oh, now, I don't ask you to show any affection for the man that adopted you, Hope. I just ask you to be civil. I thought I was very civil. Well, perhaps it's the degree of your civility that bothers me. Can you say hello to your grandmother? <laughs> oh, how charming. <laughs> uh, the key to the main house is the only one you'll need. Haven't been able to reach Ralph Lee. Maybe his phone's out of order again. Thanks. Oh, what about him when you're up at the ranch? Him is spending the whole day Saturday with his daddy. And right now, his good amiga is going to give him a bite of lunch. Por favor, dale algo de comer y metelo en la cama. Leaving her in charge of all three children when you're gone? Is that smart? Is it dumb? Well, I suppose you know what you're doing. After three children, two husbands, two divorces, I would certainly hope so. One divorce. I've only filed against Craig. Oh, for heaven's sake, Hope. You haven't lived with the man for two years. Well, if I'd gotten myself divorced right away, I might have gotten myself married again right away. You might have at that. I know you discarded your first husband because you considered him a boring stay at home. But Craig... Didn't you tell me he had to wash his face four or five times a day because his skin was so oily? Of course you did. It wasn't his skin so much as the fact that he was uninterested in children. Oh, well, you see. Now I'm no longer confused. How are you getting on with your friend, Hope? Oh, I'm getting along with my friend very well indeed, Ben. My friend's name is Richard Morgan, in case it slipped your mind. Nothing has slipped my mind, Hope. What has crossed my mind is that he pays his own wife half of all he earns. 
in alimony and support. He has barely enough to get by on himself. What can he offer you? Himself. Well, I'm sure in time, as I grow older and wiser, I'll come to understand that. Thank you for the use of your telephone. I want you to know, I'm happy. Are you? Yes. Clams are happy. Hiya, Hopi. I'm going to try to get away a little early. Uh, well, <laughs> early's uh, four o'clock or so. What? Mr. Tyler's here of the L.A. Times. Hold on, huh? Mr. Tyler. Mr. Tyler, Bradley Tyler. Hi, Karen. Hi, Hope. Your husband's expecting you. Oh, good. Come on in. Hello. How are you doing? I'm pretty good. Yeah. You know, it's funny the way people still pretend that we're married. Yeah. You're still picking up your son in the morning? Yeah. We'll be together from 9 o'clock on. Do I need a translator? No, Dolores has been briefed. And she'll be there when you bring him back. You now, isn't it funny how the post office always manages to send me one or two of your bills? <sighs> Sorry about that. Yeah. Mr. Blaine needs to talk to you. He's at the airport. Okay, just a second. Sorry, I gotta take this. Oh, okay, quickly. On Saturday, Richard's being interviewed by this guy from the Times, and he can mention his favorite restaurants and where he buys his clothes and stuff, and I thought maybe he could mention some of your clients. Oh, no, I don't think so, Hope. There's not much publicity value in that. Thanks. Okay. Okay. Ciao. Ciao. Hey, what's he being interviewed for? Um, he's one of L.A.'s ten most eligible bachelors. Bye. 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 Good grief. My number one need is to be important to somebody. Number two is sex. That's pretty important. And number three is, like, what kind of movies do you like and what time do you like to get up in the morning? And all that can be worked out. Who is he? he who he? This guy that wants to let the whole city of Beverly Hills and county of Los Angeles know what a standout stud you are. It's not a good idea, huh? No, I think it's a terrific idea. Really. It's a wonderful idea. One of the all-time great ideas. I just don't happen to like it very much. You'll like him. No, I won't. Yes, you will. I told him all about you and your kids. My three wonderful kids? Yeah. And he wanted to know their names and their ages and where they went to school and a million other things. He said he's tired of bachelors from nowhere with nobody. He wants the family of man in the story. The family of men? Two daughters and a granddaughter. You don't look old enough to be a grandfather. <laughs> Happens before you know it. I also have a little boy. Lives outside Paris with his mother. Do you see him much? Oh, of course. He's the light of my life. 
Let me get some pictures of you two. We better do it before it gets too dark. Oh, why don't you just take pictures of Richard? Oh, no. You have to be in the pictures. What's the point in being a bachelor if there isn't a pretty girl around? Right? Right. Could you put on some makeup for me? Hey, Hopi. Just about ready. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Listen, why don't you dial 155 and ask Ralph Lee if he'll saddle up a horse for us? Who's Ralph Lee? He's the caretaker. He lives in the little cottage down there. Yeah, good. Don't you think he'd look great posing with some horse flesh? Terrific. Alone at last. <laughs> you know, I have a three year old son. Mm -hmm. Tell me about yours. What's his name? Christian. Oh, Christian, that's beautiful. A beautiful boy. One day, just a couple of weeks ago, as a matter of fact, he suddenly started talking. Not just words, but talk. Thoughts. Sentences. He stood there with his legs spread, rocking back and forth. One foot, then the other. One side. strawberries and lions and this whole wonderful little world. Boring you. Oh, no, no, not at all. Well, ta-da. there in your little bag of tricks? Yes. Better use some of that, too. Oh, look. Oh, why don't you guys give me a minute, okay? Thanks. going to be all right in those boots today. Oh, well, these two pants are too too long for my other shoes. <laughs> Did you pants me too long, my other <laughs> Okay, kids, come ahead. Having fun. Come on. Easy. Mm -hmm. Easy. Ah, <laughs> oh, this tree is gorgeous. Take my picture. Just checking the focus, Hope. Step into her a little bit, Richard. Okay. Here. What are you doing? Hold this. <laughs> okay. Oh, boy, this is it, Richard. This is the one, Richard. The successful bachelor in paradise. Beautiful. I'm sorry, Mrs. Masters. Uh, Saddles are all locked up in the tack room, and your mother's got the key. Oh, that's right. I don't think that's any problem. We'll find us a rope and make the halter and round up a horse. Right. Richard, while we're waiting, how about stand over there by the fence? Okay. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Let me take this. You need to. 
Oh, no, I've had my picture taken enough. One more will hurt. You know, you didn't tell me about your birthday. But I bet I know exactly what you are. Leo. Leo the lion. Am I close? Very close. Richard's a Virgo. Very neat, very organized. Total perfectionist in his work. And I'm a Libra. Who are you? Mm. But almost Scorpio. And Scorpio moon people are very psychic. Almost witchy. We're terrific at parties, very charming, and totally wonderful. <laughs> We're losing our light. Don't you move over there by Richard? Oh. Great, Ralph. Thanks. Come on. Come on, girl. be laying it on a little thick with this guy. You might get the wrong idea. What? Mm. <laughs> Is this better? Mm. Give it a taste. Mmm, that's great. Good. Put it on. Mmm. This salad dressing really is terrific. Thank you, Richard. This wine, as they say, is not too bad either. Oh, can I pour you a little more? Uh, no, no, thanks. Are you okay, hon? I can't eat anymore. I think I'm gonna go lay down for a few minutes. Would you excuse me? Sure, Hokey. Sure, Hope. Take care of yourself. got a bad back, and she wore those high-heeled boots that she insisted on wearing them, too, right? Yeah, we should have known that before we traced around out there all day, didn't we? Well, she'll probably be all right tomorrow. She's rests. he leaving? He said uh, something about oh, oh, driving to Bakersfield tonight. Well, you're probably going to sleep for the night. 
under the covers. I thought I'd just take a little nap. <sighs> so, after he's gone, why don't you wake me up? bachelors that uh, meet our qualifications. Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of coming up with a final selection. Is she, uh, okay. Oh, yeah. She's just tired. Lovely girl. Just lovely. Thank you. That's nice of you to say. One more for the road. Oh, absolutely. I'll get it. Are you sure? Absolutely. Don't yeah. spoil me. <laughs> when are you going to marry her? When? Oh, as soon as the way is clear for both of us, I guess. Meanwhile, you just sleep with her, huh? <laughs> How's that? You sleep with her. Go to bed with her. I, I don't believe I understand exactly what you're trying to say. Rise and shine, Hopi. can't leave you alive. You can identify me. No. No. I wouldn't. I don't even know who you are. Oh, God. 
Contract out on you. A contract to kill you. Why would anyone want to kill me? I've never hurt anybody in my life. You're going to court next week, aren't you? But, but it's just a preliminary proceeding. It. They talk money at proceedings like that. Should have killed you when you were asleep. I'm not gonna get burned for you. Who wants me dead? Your husband. Careful where he borrows his money. He borrowed forty-two thousand dollars from a guy in the organization. The money's got to be paid back. He took out a big insurance policy on you. He's the beneficiary. You're worth two hundred thousand dollars. Dead. Say to that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm just scared. I'm just frightened. I don't believe he did that. Ha <laughs> ha. 
Craig want some good publicity out of all this, too? He said his business can always use some good press. Something to grab people. He said to have you and the kids die in a spectacular way. No! Children! Oh, dear God, no! Oh, dear God, yes! The two older ones. He said he'd take care of the little one. No. It was his problem. I have to go home. I have to go home now. My baby needs me. I have to go home. Uh, uh. No, he doesn't. Your baby has daddy. He has daddy all weekend. Uh. And you've got me. You don't understand. No matter how many times I've asked him, I've been sick. I've had a thousand problems. He never takes a baby on Sunday. Never. Old Craig will have the baby this weekend. Believe me. His name's James Meyer, M-E-Y-E-R. He works at a filling station on uh, North LaSalle Street. On February 5, approximately 2 a.m., a man and woman drove up in a black Buick sedan. While the woman who stayed in the car paid for the gas, the man ran into the station and emptied my cash register. He waved me inside with a gun, and they drove off. I'm going to tell you how I did this, Miss Foley. I showed Meyer five pictures of five men, including Williams. He identified Williams. Then I showed him five pictures of five women, including yourself. He picked you right away. Now, I'm going to put my cards on the table, counselor. I'm not the least bit interested in nailing you. I don't want you. I want him. What's the deal? Whenever he contacts you, no matter how he does it, you contact us.
I'm not afraid to die. What the hell? I want you to know that. And I want you to know why. Why? Richard's dead now. Nothing I could do to change that. I don't expect to continue living. You made it very clear to me that you're going to shoot me. But I do care about my children. And... See, the thing is... That once I'm gone... They really don't have anybody else. Just my mother and my stepfather. But I know my mother couldn't begin to cope with them. She couldn't even cope with me. And... And if I let the law take its course, then... Then my children are going to be farmed out. They're going to be separated. It would destroy my children to be separated. I have a confession. Every time I start to kill you, start to pull the trigger. I see you in that market picking up that dirty little rat of a kid with the runny nose. A little creep got in your way. Now he's in mine. But if I don't put you away, I'm in a lot of big trouble. Trust you? Yes. No. Yes. No, I can't trust you. Yes, you can trust me. I gotta get out of this killing business. I wanted to get out of it for a long, long time. But having a gun go off at somebody is a greatest feeling I have ever had. You see what I mean? I want to call my mother. No phone calls. Look, you can hold that gun to my head while we're talking. I want to call my mother and make sure she gets the kids and, and keeps them until they can be awarded to a family that I know that, that'll take care of them. Then you can shoot me. No. Then let me make out a will. What for? A will that says to keep my children together. And, and let them go live with this family I know. How's your family going to get the will? I don't know. You, you could take it to them. <laughs> or you could mail it. You could do that. I trust you to do that if you'll just trust me enough to let me sit up and write it. I've had dozens of close shots of you. You ever tell anybody about me? The right people will know who you are, and they'll find you. And you'll be dead. No, I would never tell anybody about you. I swear it. You'd testify against me. No, no, I wouldn't. I'd never testify against you. Never. I promise. Hope I'm going to take good care of you from now on. I want you to believe me when I tell you that as long as you don't do anything to become a menace to me, I'll fix it. Fix what? The contract.
have to call the police sometime about Richard. The first thing we have to do is make sure your children are safe. You know what I wish? I wish you were pregnant. God, nothing could make me happier. See you still alive. Not after all the money he's put out. How much was that? $3,600 down. If I gave you $3,600, would you let me go? <laughs> you haven't got $3,600. You haven't got a bean. You better think about it, Hope. You really want me to let you go? I go, they'll just send somebody else to kill you and your kids. I stay, you've got a chance. He never takes the baby on Sunday. He plays golf. Buenas noches. Buenas noches. This gentleman is assisting me. When, when Senor Craig comes, don't tell him I'm back. Don't tell him you've seen me or, or heard from me. I, I don't want to speak to him. Do you understand? You just get the baby and you bring him here to me. A key, sabe? See? Si? Where's Glenn? El basketball game? Oh, yes. And Nancy Ellen? Ella está en la próxima casa. Birthday party. Oh, that's right. I forgot. Thank you. This is tapped. But I, I have to call my mother. When I go out of Shut town, I... Shut up about your mother. He's right on time. Good old Craig. What are you going to do? the kid spent half a minute talking to the maid to make sure she remembers he was here and then he'll go he's expecting a call somewhere to let him know what happened
next door. And he is at the basketball game. They'll both be coming home soon. Safe and sound. Don't say that. Never talk that way about Mr. Tyler. He's our friend. He's our good, good friend, and he's helping us. Helping us do what? He's helping us until... He's just helping us. Look, there's something that I have to tell you, but this isn't the right time. When is the right time? Later. When's later? Later. Why do we have to sleep in here? Where's Richard? Yeah, where's Richard? Move over, honey. That's, that's one of the things I have to, to tell you later. What's the matter with now? Yeah. Look, later, OK? Let's just go to sleep now. Let's get some. Don't You're crazy. I hate you. Hey, come here. Hi, Mom. Mommy.
got everything? Yeah. yeah. Okay. We'll see your mom in a minute. I'll be right back. I'm going to take the kids to school. I'll be gone most of the day. She'll be alone. Lock all the doors. Something. All the doors and all the windows. Front, back, everywhere anyone can enter. Don't leave the house. And no phone calls. I don't want you talking to anybody just yet. But my mother will call. I, I know she will. I, I just know it. Who else besides your mother? Um, uh, Dells. It's, it's a charity thing, and they call. Okay. Okay. No matter who calls, your mother, the Delts, whoever, whatever, you just say politely that I can't talk right now. I'll call you back in a day or two. My mother will never accept that. You make her accept that. I'm trying to save your life. They're watching this house right now. They're watching us right now. Don't give them any reason to come in here and kill you and your kid while I'm gone. Well, haven't heard from me in a while. Swell well if you don't mind, I'm late for court. Still playing his games, huh? You know what I'd like to do? I'd like to sit here by the fire with you forever. Just put the kids to bed and sit by the fire with you. The family of man. I'm tired. I think I'll go home. I've been all over town all day today trying to protect you and those kids and get this thing resolved. I'm tired too. Let me give you a back rub. Okay.
bury me. Will you marry me, Hope? I'm already married. After that, will you marry me? I can go straight right now, starting tomorrow. I can get a job. Suppose I stay out of trouble for five years and become an attorney, then will you marry me? Uh, I don't know. I, I can't honestly say. I, I don't know how I'll feel in five years. And don't, don't let anyone in the house. Our lives have been threatened. Good. Come on, we're gonna be late. Okay, Oh, I don't think they should go to school. Of course they should be going to school. Everything has to appear normal. If they didn't go to school, then they'd be in danger. Trust me, I know these people. Now listen to me. Your mother is going to be asking a lot of questions. That's what you're going to tell her. Sometime Saturday night, after you and Richard were asleep, someone got into the house, an intruder. You don't know how. This intruder slammed you around, raped you, tied you up. You blacked out. You fainted. Sunday morning, I showed up. You were expecting me. I found you. I untied you. I found Richard dead. This intruder knew everything about your life. Your children, our schools, the works. He said he'd kill you and them if you went to the police. He persuaded me to drive you back into Beverly Hills. Make sure that the kids were safe before you went to the police. You got it? I think so. You better know so. Those aren't amateurs out there. Now say it. Say what? Intruder, intruder, intruder. Intruder. If you do anything along the way to attract attention, you're dead. Everyone in this house is dead. And the same thing goes for your mother. If she tries to contact the police, she'll be killed. They've got a tap on her phone by now. They're listening. They're hovering. They're watching. But I'll protect you, Hope. You and your children, trust me. Try to rest. Can't rest. Well, then let me rest. And stop that damn pacing up and down. It's hard on my rug. And my nerves. Oh, for God's sake, hope you look awful. When's the last time you ran a comb through your hair? Those clothes. Looks like you've been sleeping in them for days. No. Hello? Are you all right? Yes. Is that him? All right. Tell him to go over here. He can't talk now. He, he has to change locations. He, he'll call back. 
Well, the next time he calls, you tell him to come over here and explain some things or I'm going to call the police. Mother, don't you understand? We're all in danger. He's the only one that can help us. We have to depend on him. You look like you're on the verge of something. I'm going to have Dr. Mayer look at you. No, don't call anyone. Anyone. Where are you going? What are you going to do? Well, I thought I might answer the door. It's a rather natural reaction when the bell rings. I want to say hello to my grandchildren. They usually stop by at... Come in. Hi, Mom. Oh, thank God. Oh, thank God you're all right. Thank God. Come closer. Come closer. Listen to me. I want you both to listen to what I have to say. It's something I couldn't tell you before. And after I tell you this bad, bad thing, I want you to go back into the other room and take care of your little brother. Because that's what I need for you to do right now. Something very bad has happened. Someone has killed Richard. He won't be with us anymore. Oh, don't cry. Please don't cry. No matter how much you feel like crying, don't cry, okay? Glenn, help me. Nancy Ellen, help me, please. It's something very, very bad. And the reason I need you to look after your little brother is because someone Someone wants to steal him, take him away. So I want you to go back into the den and watch him. Don't let him out of your sight. And don't fight with each other. Just keep him quiet while I try to work this out. All right? After you untied her, left the ranch, why didn't you go straight to the police? We were there, the children were here. All Hope wanted to do was get back home to make sure the children were safe. Well, all right, they're safe, they're here. Let's call the police. Mother, please, just, just listen to him, please. We can't go to the police just yet. It's much too dangerous. I spoke to my people in Chicago this morning. From all they can ascertain, the contract is still out on Hope and the children. And probably on you and your husband now that she's here. Who? What? Who in the name of heaven are your people? I think the less you know about me and my people, the better. Well, that's not very satisfactory. Mother, please. You keep saying mother, mother, mother. God, Hope, you haven't called me mother in 20 years, and now you've called me mother a dozen times in the last 24 hours. When you got back here, try not to do it again. It's very unnerving. When you got back here, found the children safe, I don't understand why you didn't put everybody in the car and drive off to the nearest police station. They have their people in the police department. What? Mother, please listen to him. What did I just ask you? Listen! Their people are everywhere, Mrs. Niven. Even in the Beverly Hills Police Department. Have their people in schools, hospitals, political positions. I want to go to the police, believe me, and I will. But I want to make sure that I'm talking to the right policeman and not one of them. I haven't ascertained who that is just yet. The best thing I could do would be to go to my attorney, give him my deposition, and get on the next plane out of the country. Oh, no, no, please. You can't leave now. You're Hope's only witness. The police will want to know every detail of what you've done so far so they can find this terrible intruder.
I don't know whether to laugh or cry. A drunk or go to Amarillo. That's the most fantastic and ridiculous story I've ever it heard in my ridiculous. life. It isn't ridiculous. I know it sounds fantastic. You just don't anybody here expect me to believe too much of it. I've practiced law in Los Angeles almost 40 years. I'm 63 years old, and I have never broken the law in my life, and I don't intend to start now. This man is dead? Yes. He was shot to death? Yes. Well, this is clearly a police matter. Tell him! Don't call the police. Don't call anyone. If you do, you're condemning my children to die. You believe that? I know that. I have tolerated many of your moods and your idiosyncrasies. Please, I'm begging you. Your father's absolutely right, Hope. Of course, you just have to be notified. I can't be delayed any longer. But you can't just call. I don't want to call just anyone at the police department, Mr. Niven. That's true. Why not? Well, they might be there, too. What? They might be there, too. They? Yes. Who are we talking about? The organization is in the Beverly Hills Police Department. He knows. Well, he sure as hell better let me know, because I wouldn't want to be phoning the organization now, would I? Will you please just wait until we decide what we're going to do? The Beverly Hills Police will decide what to do as soon as I give them something to work on. What did I just tell you? The risk we'll have to take. Maybe I am being overcautious. But don't use that phone, sir. That line is tapped. I'm still going to contact the police. Uh, call from someplace outside the house. Ask them to send somebody over here right away. Mr. Niven, would it be better, sir, if I made that phone call? Why? But you just said... Shut up. Please. Better? Well, sir, I know how difficult you find all this to believe. But not only is that phone tapped, but they are watching this house. I've been seen coming in and going out. It won't look strange to them if I go out and come in again. Van, he's right. None of this is right. All of it is wrong. It's crazy. I'd feel much better if you'd let him make that phone call. Van. All right. The sooner you do it, the better. Yes, sir. You'll come back, won't you? Of course. It'll be all right. Please, be very careful. I want to write out a will. Will you show me how to do it? There's nothing to show. You just write it on a piece of paper and sign it. Make sure you date it. Contact the police. I couldn't see anything that was wrong, see? But I felt it. Then I shined my light over on the door jam. Captain, the district attorney's here. Oh, Mr. Houston, sir, could you give us some ideas to 
Get that damn fool out of here. Yes, sir. Well, Jack, what do we got here? This is a bad one, Bob. I want plenty of coverage, Vern. You get as close as you can to his head and his mouth. When you're finished here, take him over to district for x-rays. Oh, hello, Jim. Joe. Doc. Hello, Gene. Hello, Doc. You got a positive ID? No, sir, we got no ID. What have you got? Well, they've lifted a lot of readable prints. That's a start. I don't want any press in here until I give the okay. Right, sir. He, he was about, uh, about your height, uh, um, but heavier. No, no, he, he was thinner. And, and he was white or, or Mexican. And he was tall, he was really tall. He was about six feet or more and 180, 190 pounds. And he had uh, long hair, really long, stringy hair. And uh, whiskers or, or, or a goatee or something. I'll get it. You ought to call the Times. Why? She really doesn't have... Just a moment. Why? He's a photographer. He, he took my picture. He works for them. This intruder? No. No, he, he was in the middle of the night. Someone, someone came in in, in in the middle of the night. He, an intruder. That's right. That's right. An intruder. The, the, this and it, tra, tra, oh, I'm sorry, my my mouth doesn't seem to be working. Mrs. Masters, if you would just try to calm down. <laughs> did, did, did that ever happen to you? Mrs. Masters, could we start at the beginning? Okay, okay. I, I was lying there, see, and I was all tied up, thinking every moment was going to be my last, and then. Excuse me. Well, who's Finch? I am. For you. Look. Look, you, you've got to arrest my husband. He's trying to kill us. I... I should get Richard a really nice funeral. He, he was such a beautiful man. He... I should cremate him because that, that's, what, that's what he would want. What's your husband's name? Craig. No, you see, he took out this insurance policy on me. Where do we find him? You, no, you don't understand. See, it's a contract, and he kept trying to... I don't have to talk to you. I don't have to talk to him. I don't have to talk to anybody in the police department because my children come first. I'm... Your children probably come first, too. I, I, if you have children. What? What's your name? Tony Mateo. Do you have any kids? Mm-hmm. Mrs. Masters, uh, where's your car? My car? 71 Vega, yellow. My, that's my car. It's... It's at the ranch. We're going to want you to come down to the station with us. We're going to need some more information. <sighs> okay, your house. Uh, owner rent, Mrs. Masters. Uh, own, I guess. My mother bought it for me. I don't have any money. What about my family? Is somebody watching them? Your family's fine. Occupation, uh, homemaker? Homemaker's fine. Okay. You just sign here at the bottom where it says signature. Thank you. 
Mission 1, PC-187, what is that? That's homicide, Mrs. Masters. Murder? Murder. I'm being arrested for murder? That's right. Oh, 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 oh. No! 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 No